On today's I Cave Dave, Mark Gurman's list of M3 Max, iPhone 15's launch dates and what to expect, Apple Watch Ultra goes full dark mode, and what's the big fuss about M3 anyway? I'm Mike Cave Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and if you want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours, like the video, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. So Mark Gurman's weekly goodie bag of news has just dropped and what is in Uncle Mark's sack this week? We have a bunch of M3 stuff, then we'll come to the iPhone 15 that's about six weeks away. Mac Mini with M3 is apparently now in testing at Apple and we'll be talking more about the M3 chip itself later in the video during your iCave Answers questions. But as for the Macs themselves that are on the way, German has shared the list of products that he knows are on the way along with their code names. What we have on the way is the M3 13 inch MacBook Air. We've got the M3 15 inch MacBook Air, the M3 13 inch MacBook Pro, which we all hoped would have died by now, but there is maybe a reason for it to exist. The M3 iMac, yes, iMac is getting updated. M3 Pro and M3 Max 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros and this possible M3 Mac Mini, although I'm not 100% convinced I've got to say. Now in terms of what's coming and when, even though the Mac Mini with M3 is apparently appearing in developers logs and Mark's assuming that it's a Mac Mini based on the base configuration for the M3, which again, we'll dive more into the chip itself later on, but it's running Mac OS Sonoma 14.1, which suggests that the chip would probably be released later in 2023. My thought though is that there is more of a chance of this being an iMac than a Mac Mini, as it's unlikely that the Mini will get the update before the M3 Pro and M3 Max chips are available in the higher tiered MacBook Pros, as the M2 generation had a Pro chip option in the Mini. While Apple could release these two models on different dates, it wouldn't really fit with their existing pattern that we've seen in the past. Putting the chip out first though in an iMac and the base level MacBook Pro 13 inch however does make sense as the Air can then wait to be updated at the same time as the 15 inch model. Again separate release dates for the same product line make little sense, though that would appear to also point to Apple not offering an M3 Pro in the iMac itself, which is disappointing because I think it's got enough thermal room there to actually do it. But onto the iPhone 15, and German is saying the 12th or 13th of September, which is the Tuesday or the Wednesday, with iOS 17 coming the following Monday, and the phones shipping the following Friday. Now, this year's base iPhone 15 and 15 Plus are expected to gain the dynamic island, as opposed to the infamous notch, the A16 chip from last year's iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max models, and also frosted glass us on the back just like the pro models in a change from the glossy look that we have right now it's also thought that the body will get a slight redesign with curves to the frame as opposed to the current more angled edges now coming up to the pro models the iphone 15 pro and pro max will reportedly get the a17 chip who knew which should be on tsmc's three nanometer process now that will offer serious performance bumps or serious efficiency boosts or a fun balance of the two now, in addition, the updated displays will fit more viewing area into the same physical body size by slimming down those black bezels around the edge. The frame will also reportedly gain those curved edges of the base models, but also switch from stainless steel to titanium, which will reduce the weight of the handset. Internally, the construction will change to closer reflect the base model's internals, making a damaged back glass much easier to replace. Also, the Max model will differentiate from the smaller iPhone 15 Pro by including the first folded pair camera in an iPhone, allowing much better zoom capability for the first time. But it is going to come at a cost because it's been reported that the uh, Pro models will also get a storage boost starting at 256 gigabytes, double the previous year, but also that the Pro pricing will increase with $100 on the regular Pro model and the larger Pro model potentially increasing by a massive $200 to $12.99. Honestly, I think if that's the case, Apple will probably pull the trigger on the Ultra branding bigger storage, big camera upgrade, as well as the mute switch potentially being replaced with the rumored action button might be enough to convince some. And Apple's competitors are already way beyond those kind of prices with some of their flagship phones and quite a lot of the foldables. Speaking of Ultra, Evan Rogers asks iCave Answers what's on the latest roundup for the next version of the Apple Watch. Now the Apple Watch in general is expected to get a faster chip this year after the past couple of generations have had basically a rebadged S6 chip from the Series 6 watch. 
The S6 is based on the A13 cores, which came along with the iPhone 11 generation, and the cores haven't been upgraded since then at all, and it's built on TSMC's 7 nanometer node. So even a bump to 5 nanometer cores from, say, the A16 would give a great efficiency boost and help with battery life. Beyond that, no new features have really been rumored beyond the software overhaul that we saw at WWDC. They might have held back a couple of features, but I think it's mainly going to be software this time. Likewise, the Apple Watch Ultra will also likely get a second generation, bumping up to that S9 chip too, and a new colorway adding the black titanium finish for the high-end models, but otherwise the device will basically be the same. Almost certainly not uh, worth the upgrade if you have either of the previous generations, but I don't think Apple ever intends for people to upgrade every year with iPhones or watches. Three to four years is probably fine as a time frame for watch upgrades, assuming that your battery still is in decent shape health-wise and holding a good charge. Probably some new straps and stuff, and maybe another activity added for the Ultra in software. So you've got diving already. Maybe we could add skydiving with the altimeter giving you alerts for when to pull your chute. Now let me know what activities you'd like to see down in the comments. And our other question from IK Answers this week comes from Pax on Peace 9970 um, asking, would the M3 be based on the upcoming A17 or the A16, which is for sure coming in the iPhone 15 Pro lineup? The M1 was on the same node as the A14 and the M2 on the same node as the A15. And this question has been bugging me for a while. The M3, according to the logs that Mark Gurman saw, contains an eight core CPU 10 core GPU, so the same like core counts as the M2 generation, but up from 8 and 8 in the M1. Uh, and assuming that the new 3 nanometer production node that we've heard about is true, that will give us big gains this time around. And in terms of the cores themselves inside, if we are going to 3 nanometer, I think that we could well be looking at A17 based cores. Now I said from the start that it wouldn't make sense to do 18 month cycles, as Apple would be skipping core generations on occasion. I still think that Apple wanted and still wants to make their silicon for the Macs an annual update, but Production limitations and delays through the pandemic have made that impossible so far. Hopefully this will be the reset that they've been waiting for and we can go to annual from now on. Or am I just wishful thinking here? The other thing that would be amazing if it happens is the ray tracing that Apple had been working on for the A16 chips, but failed to get that working properly in those GPUs. And if those issues have now been resolved, that can appear in this generation's GPU cores. That will be a very useful tool for 3D modeling and any sort of 3D graphics, as well as any gaming. Now, my big question, however, is this. If Apple has M3 with better performance, efficiency, and new graphics features, why would they go ahead and put M2 in the Vision Pro? For me, I'm pretty sure that we will see the final version of Vision Pro actually ship with M3 inside and M2 will just go into the testing hardware kits, just like when Apple Silicon was revealed and A12Z chips were in the development hardware so that the M1 was there to blow everyone away when it actually launched. Let me know your thoughts because I think ray tracing in an M3 based uh, Vision Pro would be pretty bonkers. So thank you for watching. Drop your questions in for the next show in the comments with hashtag iCaveAnswers. There is a lot coming this week. I'm trying to get back to daily content. So please subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you to the Patreons for your support. Join them at iCaveDave.com forward slash Patreon. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.